Hello friend, welcome to the Java Puzzle. Today in this video we are going to discuss about how we can use conditional on property annotation with Spring Boot and how we will test it. But before moving to that, let me introduce what is the conditional on property annotation. So generally this annotation allows us to instantiate a component based on a given condition and this annotation is especially useful for enabling or disabling component based on the feature flag let's take one example let's suppose we could instantiate an implementation or another depending on a configuring property it would be some confusing so i will give another example also uh, we will use the cache service here and we have a two type of cache service first one is a in-memory cache service and second one is a redis sometimes we want to move from a in-memory to redis and redis to in-memory so on of a condition in the application dot property we just add one property where we will define the cache should be in memory then our in memory cache service will be called and if we will provide the redis then redis service implementation will be called so generally this annotation can also be helpful to enable or disable functionality based on a feature flag property or we can say enable or disable background job in our application based on the property so this is the main pros of this annotation so let's come back to the uses so generally this basic uses of this annotation is quite simple as i already explained to you right in order to be able to understand it easily we are going to write a simple application so i just open this spring initializer and add the two dependency spring web and lombok this is a popular dependency and i am just assume that you better know about this dependency so let's quickly move to the our intellij so as i show you uh, these are the two dependency which i took it from uh, spring initializer then firstly i will create one package name as a service and inside the service i will create one interface which name as a cache service it should be interface and here i will quickly create one uh, abstract method uh, which name as a uh, string uh, save and as a parameter i will pass the entity uh, not from the java x it's just a normal entity class model which we are going to create here so i will just create this class uh, let me create from here and create a class inside the model package and inside the model our entity is here so inside the entity i will uh, i will take a two attribute here so int uh, id then uh, let me make it a private okay then another one would be a private string masses and as i add the lombok dependency so i can use the data here so our model class is done entity class is done so let me create a quickly implement a service implementation here so first one is a in memory in memory service impl and another one would be the redis impl service impl so redis service impl okay so if i will oh, okay so i will just implement this cache service and add the method here implement the method and here just print out the method name and also i will just return this name and again i will i will print the message also so plus uh, let me add the id entity dot get id okay then uh, message entity dot get masses okay so i will just copy this because same thing we have to do inside this in memory so implements cache service implement the method and what the method here then this one and let me copy this so our implementation is done now the other thing is now we are going to create a configuration bean which will contain the definition of both component 
in in memory service IMPL and this ready service IMPL. So let me create one package configuration then i will add the cache duration and as this is a configuration class so i will add the configuration oh, sorry i will add the configuration annotation here okay and inside it we will create a bean first uh, for the radius and the another bean for the in in menu i will quickly create that and bean and public uh, start here public Cache service and this one is a Redis cache service and it will it will return new Redis service IMPL. Okay, so same bean we will create for our in memory. So I will just copy and paste here and just change it to the in memory and it would be return the in memory service IMPL. Okay, so now we create the two bean here now. Here is the magic and the magic is the annotation conditional on property and in the conditional on property we will firstly provide the prefix so here you can see there is a four thing value prefix name having value and last one is a match if missing so firstly we will use the prefix here and prefix let me create one prefix is app dot cache dot play okay and then other thing is name provide the name we can provide the name okay it should be a type because this is a, a, a cache type okay so just provide the name anything you can provide here then after we have a having value okay and what value we want to provide for this app.cast.layer.type what value we want to provide for this redis so i will just provide the redis here okay the same thing we will do for our in memory and the only thing we will change here is the in memory inside the application dot property if we will provide the redis then it will call the redis and if we will provide the in memory then it will call the in memory service okay so as we see that here we define the annotation at the method layer okay and where we define a bean for each implementation and this should be enough to tell spring to inject one implementation or the other into our entity service so quickly i will create a entity service also here so entity service so our spring would know that which uh cache service they have to inject here so i will create here the entity service so let me first provide stereotype annotation service annotation and inside it we just auto wire auto wire our cache service private cache service okay. and i will make it a final so i can use so i can uh, so here it will complain us to add a constructor parameter so i will add the constructor parameter here okay and then we will create one method which should be public and provide the string uh save save in cache and provide the entity or we can we can use this and int uh, id comma string mass easy and return this cache service dot save and here we will provide because let me add one more annotation here which should be a builder so we can easily create a object of entity can provide here so entity dot builder dot build enter here add jamie column and here dot id is id and dot message is back. just provide it and return it then the most of thing is done the we have to create a controller here you can call from our browser or a okay so entity can controller provide the best controller best mapping provide the root level mapping okay and now we will use the cat mapping and then just use save and path variable we will pass here so id and message okay so here public string uh, save data in cache and here we just use the path variable which should be id and it should be int so id comma another one is a path variable another one is message so string message and one more thing i forgot to auto wire 
our service class so cas service okay and just return cas service dot uh, here inside the cas service let me see a uh, entity service not cas service we have to provide the entity service, right because this entity service we provide the cas service right and here we create this method so entity service copy this save in cas id and Masses and return it. And uh, now in the application dot property, we just have to copy this. Uh, not from here. Uh, from the cache configuration app dot cache dot layer dot type. So initially, I will just add the radius and save it. Now I will run this program. Now our Spring Boot is run on a port 8080. Let me open this and localhost API save one java puzzle if i will run this you can see radius service impl save and id which i provide here and you will see this message is coming from the radius service impl right and if i will make it a uh, in memory save it rerun the program and if i will run again this same value in, in this time you will see this is coming from the in memory so as you can see we are defining a different value for the property in each run okay and once the context get started using this property we we see that the different message is coming from the different cache service so this is a conditional on property annotation and this is the uses of this annotation so hopefully this annotation and this tutorial is helpful for you and i hope you will use this annotation in your next project or in your existing project if you think this video is helpful for you just share with your friend like share and comment on this video and if you didn't click on the notification bell please click on the notification bell so in next time i will upload some video you will see notification on the time thank you